The man convicted in the infamous double murder of a Bedford County couple in 1985 is now fighting a new battle over DNA testing. ABC 13's Noreen Turin is here with a potential way of shedding more light on the case and why Yen Soaring isn't playing along. Well, Yen Soren confessed more than once to the brutal murders of Derek and Nancy Hasem. He has since insisted that was a lie to protect his then girlfriend, Elizabeth Hasem. Now, two podcasters believe they found an avenue that could lead to new DNA testing, but Soaring is saying no. That's a that's that's really soft print. Yeah. Charlottesville reporters Rachel Ryan and Courtney Stewart have spent the last three years poring over the transcripts, documents, and evidence in the 1985 murders of Derek and Nancy Hasem. Can there ever be? It's for their new podcast, Small Town Big Crime. They set out to take a fresh look at the case, including exploring some of the theories Yen Soaring and his team have suggested over the years as to who else could have done it. We had been at the press conferences where it was announced that there might have been two unidentified men that left DNA at the Hasem crime scene. That, it's a mixture. that revelation came in 2017 after an expert on Soaring's team studied the results from state DNA testing done in 2009. Neither Soaring's nor Elizabeth Hasem's DNA showed up on the 11 samples left in the lab that were still viable for testing. By that Not even in the type O blood found on evidence used to convict Soaring. But they said two unknown males did leave their DNA. We thought, let's try to find out who those two unidentified men were. Soaring has suggested three alternate suspects over the years. Ryan and Stewart spent months tracking down their DNA. Their expert determined none of their DNA was in the samples either. But we still have a lot of questions about who left their blood at the crime scene and their DNA. At the time of the murders, DNA testing didn't exist, so no one had developed a profile for the victims. Having that could clear up a lot of questions. The key would be new testing, if they could convince Commonwealth's attorney Wes Nance to agree to it. You are not in favor of having that evidence that's in evidence here that hasn't been tested, tested. Why not? Because we can't assure that we're going to get valid results. Nance explains the evidence was open to the public after the case closed. Countless lawyers, reporters and others have gone in and out of the evidence room with no record of who's been there or what they touched. That, he says, would just open a whole new set of theories for a case he believes was already decided correctly back in 1990. So the thing is, if Jens Soaring's DNA is among the um, DNA profiles that come out, wouldn't that end all these questions? Well, there's been an excuse for his three separate confessions. There's been an excuse as to why his co-defendant testified against him. There's been an excuse why a footprint similar in size to Jan Soaring's was left at the crime scene by the killer. Don't you think there would be an excuse if we found Soaring's DNA profile on the evidence as well? Still, after months of research, including many discussions with Nance, the podcasters developed a petition asking to test a list of items that have never been tested, including things they believe would still be sealed. Their petition included an examination to first determine whether the evidence is too contaminated. Only at that point, with agreement from Bedford County Commonwealth's attorney and our agreement, would any testing proceed? Well, Nance could have objected, but signed the petition seen and not objected to. That paves a way that the judge could have ordered the transportation and evaluation of that evidence if he wanted to. The judge determined the two podcasters had no standing, meaning they don't have the right to request it. So they sent their petitions to those who do. Elizabeth Hasem and Jens Soaring. Jens was excited, said he would have his attorneys look at it, um, and then never really reached back out to us. And we kept checking back and checking back, and months went by. Jens and his team insist he's innocent, but won't pursue testing to prove it. Why right. am I being dragged into this? Um, I have asked for testing, and I'm asking for it now. Okay? Go ahead and test it, but I am not 
submitting a petition that is not legally required. Soaring believes the podcasters have an agenda to prove his guilt in order to boost their careers. He says he can't file their petition for the same reasons he didn't file one in 2017. The statute requires that he swear under oath that the evidence hasn't been contaminated and that it may prove his innocence. The absence of Soaring's or anyone else's DNA proves only that none was left on that sample. He admits there are ways to get around those issues, but readily agrees with Nance that the results would be useless. The, the whole point of the podcaster's report is I'm not asking for testing because I I've nothing to hide. I've got nothing to hide. I have asked for testing. I know I didn't do it, but I will not find out who did this from testing those items, and it doesn't get me any further. The podcasters tell me that Elizabeth Haysom, who was convicted of being an accessory, also declined filing their petition. Soaring, meanwhile, has been in his home country of Germany for almost three years now after the state paroled both of them and sent them out of the country permanently. He says he's supporting himself as a speaker, author, and consultant. Thanks for watching the ABC 13 YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos and live coverage and local stories, click to subscribe and download our ABC 13 News app.